Hey team, in this video we're taking a look at the arrangement view versus the session view. So let's jump into Ableton and take a look. We got the session view loaded up in front of us here and you can see that I've got a bunch of clips loaded here. Um, I've got a kick, a bass, and then I've got a bunch of like arps, atmospheres, some acid leads and some synths, okay? Um, and I'm gonna demonstrate to you the power of the session view. And then we're gonna take what we've got here and we'll put it in the arrangement and you'll be able to see the difference through the example that I give, okay? So what I'll attract your attention to, first of all, is that we've got these sort of play buttons because I've loaded these clips in. And by the way, the way I did this is I, I just browsed and found a sound that I like, I can then click, drag, and I can drop it onto a channel, and then here we are, we've got the sound loaded in, okay? And um, all of these sounds are a little bit different from one another, and I could then trigger them by pressing the play button, and you can see the audio is coming through, and I'm hearing it, okay? And then I could click this one, and I play that one, okay? so. I'll demonstrate um, what I'm doing here. If I want something to stop, by the way, I can press the stop here or I can press the stop down here. This will stop everything. It stops all of these clips. But if I just want to stop that, I just press stop here and it'll, it'll stop it, okay? Cool, or down here. So let's go ahead and play the kick and bass. But I want to play everything that would be along here. So I can actually use the scene launch play button here. So if I press this, it's going to launch both the kick and bass because they're both, they're all on this intro scene that I've written. So I can actually right click here and I can rename and I can write intro and now that's named, we've got our intro. I could also color the intro so I could make it green. Then I could right click this and I could actually, um, uh, sorry, I could right click here and I can make this green as well and right click this and make it green as well. So now everything on that intro is uh, is green. So I know that's my first intro and then groove two, or sorry, groove one is going to be a different color. I could go through and color everything. I'm not going to do that right now. So press play. We got that playing, right? Now I want to launch the first groove that I've got here. Okay. So if I press this, we're going to change from playing these to playing everything along this Plane here. Okay, so play, wait a bit, and it starts playing. Okay, but what's happening there? I just waited a little moment and then it started playing. So I'm going to introduce you to the idea of quantization inside of Ableton Live. If I press play here again, you'll notice that it, it, it waited a small moment and then it started playing. So what that's effectively doing is Ableton is quantizing everything. So even if I give Ableton a command to change something, like play this scene rather than this scene, Ableton's actually going to wait and it's essentially saying like, wait, Andrew, no, you pressed that out of time. And if I started playing, as soon as you clicked it, uh, the musical timing of this this piece of music would be interrupted. So I'm going to register the fact that you've clicked to make a change, but I'm going to actually wait until the end of one musical bar before I introduce that change so everything's perfectly in time, okay? So if I press play here, then I skip through. I just keep pressing these. You'll notice that everything's perfectly in time. And it's not because I'm clicking perfectly in time, it's because Ableton is, like I said, effectively saying, okay, yep, you've clicked, I know you wanna change, I'm just gonna wait a small moment until the timing is perfect and then I'm gonna launch those new clips, okay? So these are, obviously I'm launching these clips by pressing this here, cool? So if I want to change the quantization, I'm actually able to do it with this here. So you'll see that quantization, this is the quantization bar, um, or menu, and this allows me to change the period of quantization, okay? So I could make it very rapid, so uh, 30 second notes, so. Right, and you'll effectively notice that I'm actually interrupting the flow of the music because I'm not really clicking it perfectly in time. So 30 second may not work for this, what we're doing, because my timing is 
not that good. So what I might do is I might do four bars. So I might press play here, and then I might press play here, and you'll notice that I'm gonna have to wait until the end of four bars before that starts playing. So what we'll do is I'll just wait. I'm gonna press that, okay, I'll press this. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Cool, so it's waiting a four bar period of time before it's starting to play the next thing that I've triggered. So this is how we can, yeah, keep everything in time, right? So I'm gonna show you how I'd play around. So I could start off by going, okay, let's launch the intro. And now, okay, I wanna introduce some new elements. So I'm gonna launch the second scene with the ARP. I'm gonna go ahead and press play now. And I'll wait. Cool, I'm gonna let that play. Okay, I'm gonna launch the second group to play next. I'm gonna launch just this synth to play next. Okay. And then I'll launch this one to play second. And then this one. Oh, that one's actually out of time. <laughs> Sorry. I just unwarped it. Um, so that it goes back into time because this sample is actually at 138 BPM and it was warped and stretched a little bit. Sorry about that. I'll press this one again. Cool. And now I'll press this one again. Sweet. So you can see I'm able to effectively trigger clips and play, play a progression, essentially. Okay. So this is how the session view works. And we can do that with MIDI as well. So if we had all of these as MIDI, we would be triggering MIDI clips. It's the same as the audio clips. There's not really much difference when you're using MIDI here. Although there are a few more advanced features that you can utilize that won't be in this video. So that is the session view and that is how you would jam using it. And then obviously you still got all your controls down here. So you got your volume control, you got your panning, you got your ability to turn the channels on and off, solo them or record. Um, so all of that's still the same. So if we stop the playback, okay, and then we press tab, now we're looking at the arrangement view, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna grab the kick drum. I'm gonna click on this and I'm gonna move it around, right? So I've got that selected. I'm just gonna hold that click button. I'm gonna press tab on my keyboard. And now I can take that kick and I can place it on the timeline. I'll take the bass line, put it on the timeline. I'll take this up, I'll put it on the timeline, take this atmosphere, I'll put it on the timeline. Cool, and I'm popping it in its respective track, so that's the atmosphere track, so the atmosphere's there. I take the acid sound, place it there. This first synth, the second synth, and just remember I'm using tab to go back and forth and I'm just left clicking and holding to select. And now I've popped everything into the arrangement view, but you'll see it's all grayed out. Uh, because when we're using the session view, it sort of deactivates the arrangement view, right? So if I press this, it's going to trigger back to the arrangement. Okay, so now we're back in the arrangement, everything's live. And as, if I press play from here, we're playing through the arrangement. And you'll notice that the kick only played once, the bass only played a few times, and then these are playing out because they're actually big long clips, okay? So if I sort of zoom in slightly, what I want to do is I want to arrange this kick drum so that it's actually layered all the way through so it's constantly playing. So I can do that in a number of ways. I could click on here and I could have loop selected, which it currently is. And then I can grab the end of that clip when it turns into the bracket and I could just actually pull that out. So I'll pull it out all the way to here. And then I can go onto the bass and I can actually do the same because it's looped. So that's perfect. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have the kick and bass playing the whole time. I'm gonna have this ARP start playing after four bars of music. So right now, if I select four bars, you'll see, yep, okay, four bars. And I just did that right click and change the grid to four bars. So the atmosphere is gonna play and then the ARP's gonna play 
and then I'll get the acid sound to play. And what I might do is I might change this to be one bar timing and then I'll just move, I'll just make a bit of space here. I'm going to get that to, I'll just move these along. So I'm just clicking on the title and dragging them to move them. Just going to move them along. I could use the arrow keys as well, right? Just select it and use the arrow keys back and forth. So I'm going to let that play, that play. And then I'm going to grab this one. I'm actually going to put it as own channel. So I can actually make new channels by just grabbing and dragging and dropping the audio. And I'm going to place them so they're all four bars apart from each other. Okay. And I'm going to grab the ambience. I'm going to drag it and I'm going to press control and then let go. And what that does is it makes another copy of it. Right. So the other way I could do this is I could click on it. I could go control. I could click and then go paste. Right. Or I could go control D to duplicate and then I've got another version of it. So yeah, we've got hotkeys for how we can make more pieces of audio. So now we've got an arrangement. Let's have a listen to how it sounds. We'll start it at the beginning and we'll let it play through. That is how we would make an arrangement. So hopefully that was a good demonstration of the differences between the two. So in this case, we aren't triggering things on the go. We're actually methodically sort of sequencing them in a, in a pattern. Whereas before we could just click and trigger whatever we wanted on the go. So you can utilize both methods and you can actually record from the session view into the arrangement view. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to select all of this. So click the clip up the top, hold shift, and then select down here. So I've got everything selected and press delete. Okay. I'm going to tab back over to Ableton and I'm going to go ahead and press stop. I'm going to press record and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to trigger the first, um, the intro, just the kick and bass, right? And then that'll start playing once four bars has been gone through and... Da, da, da. There we go. And now I'll trigger the next part to play at the end of four bars. And I'm going to let this play for more than four bars because it goes through, I think it goes through a total of eight bar length. So I'll trigger it to start playing now, the next one. And now I'm just going to trigger this one individually to play. I'll keep that going. And then I'll trigger the next one to play. And then I'll trigger the last one to play. Cool, and I'll let that delay tail play all the way out. And I'm just going to then press stop. Okay. So if we press tab now, oh, what's this? I have recorded what I just played into the arrangement view because I hit record up the top, started playing around. So this is how you can use both together to create your tracks. And now you've got an arranged progression. So you could one night be jamming away and make a progression that you like, leave it there, and then you can come back and listen to what you made and you can make micro edits. Cool. So this is a cool way how you bring both sides of Ableton together and use the arrangement and the session view to create your music. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this demonstration of the session view versus the arrangement view. I will see you guys in another video soon. If you want to support the channel, please press like. It helps me get out there to more people. And if you want to join the collective intelligence community, jump on Discord. The link is in the video description. Peace.